Okay, everybody, back to the <clears throat> TTR125 conversion kit. Uh, I'm sorry about the background noise. It's the fan I have blowing on me. If I turn it off, I get eaten by mosquitoes, and it's keeping mosquitoes off of me because um, it's really hot outside, and I don't have AC in my garage. But anyways, getting to this, um, I'm going to show you how I built everything, and I'm going to be reinstalling it all back together. Uh, there will This video will be a long video, so be prepared. If you want to skip, skip. But this is what I've done. Um, I am using an oversized motor and an oversized battery for this because it's a small bike. Um, <clears throat> but uh, go first, I'll show you the battery box. Okay, so this here is the battery box. And what this one does is this takes, this is gonna be taking place. Um, this whole battery box here is gonna be taking place to the motor because the motor used to keep the structural support. So first of all, I cut here. This is the frame. I sliced it right here. It didn't slice the back of it. I bent it down. I utilized the, the bracket that was here that used to connect to the motor. <clears throat> I built this box out of scrap metal and a hinge, and a hinge welded it all together. Um, this is a piece of a, a pull thing here. I've already painted this all and sat it on here so you can see what's going on here. This is part of my motor mount. Uh, structural support um, going back to here so this connects this connects here to the frame and then it goes underneath with this big giant skid plate skid plate continues all the way underneath folds up to the front here then it is welded on to this bracket here that bolts on <clears throat> um, that strengthens the whole thing up to where if I jump on something it goes to there and all the strength now I'm sure y'all are going to be concerned about this area here. I was too, but I bottomed it out all the way down with the socks with a, a ratchet strap. And I was still had an inch between here and here, so I'm not ever going to hit it. Um, I was worried at first, but I'm not really worried too much at it now. Um, but yeah, so uh, then up here at the top, it bolts in here with two bolts. My uh, controller unit's going to be bolting onto this right here, mounting here. Uh, of course, you know, the motor goes there. So I'm going to start putting it together. Um, I don't have time lapse. I don't know how to do all that stuff yet. So bear with me. It's going to be a long video But I'm just going to stick everything together and show you as I go what I've done and how I've done it. <clears throat> bent when I was loading it, <clears throat> apparently, because my top bolt's going to look like they're going to match 
up now, so I'm going to drop this stuff back down and take some pressure off of it. I did all the motor mounts white. That way they'd be very visible and you can see them really well. Um, I like to make things stand out when I build stuff. Okay. Now, this one goes over here. And the bolt in between. Keep in mind, I have taken this apart probably 15 to 20 times. When you design something and build something out of scratch, everything comes apart about 50 times while you're doing the process to put it back together, put it, take it apart, put it back together. And you keep doing that until you get it all built and, and where it's all fab and it all goes together. Oh, this motor is not light. I wish it was lighter. No. Now I am using a 4,000 watt motor, which typically is a large motor for something like this, but I want all the bang that I can get. Of 
I'll hit my head on that so many times a day. Alright, I'm gonna switch it over so you can see what I'm doing on this side real quick. <clears throat> Basically what I'm doing, putting the motor mounts on this side here. When you build motor mounts, make sure you use big hefty bolts. The bigger and heftier the bolt, the better it is when it comes to our motor mount. In my eyes, Never skip out on strength. Strength is what's going to be your friend in the end. Alright, let's see if I can do this. Probably going to cover up and you'll only be able to see what I'm doing while I'm doing this. Let's see here. This is not going to be easy at all. Let's see if I can set you right here somewhere. Oh! Dropping you. The stand isn't that well, but. All right, let's see here. Let's see if I can pull this off. I did not design this and think about this part when I was designing it. Boy, do I wish I was thought about it now. It is not easy to get this bracket in when all these bolts are loose. Bear with me. I know you can't see what I'm doing on this side, but all I'm doing is put the bolts in. trying to put a bolt in Jesus this is not easy oh my gosh Sorry y'all, but I'm not showing you what's going on. Just trying to get this strengthened up. Oh, see, I turned that darn fan down just so y'all can hear me. And mosquitoes came back out as soon as I did that. I knew they were gonna get me. All right. Let's see if I can tighten this up. Not with that big old one, not. things work. I 
And yes, that is rattle can. Paint job. All right, rattle can everything at first. Take it out, test it a few times, make sure everything's gonna work. If everything does work, then I'll come home, strip it all down, and send it off a powder coat and powder coat the whole thing. But right now, just to make sure everything's working properly, it is going to be done just this way. Okay, so there we go. So now I've got these two bolts holding this bracket in that holds that from shifting up and down on this side. We'll go over on this side over here. I haven't bolted all in yet, but once I bolt this all in and secure it all together, you'll be able to see how some more strength of it is, but all these bolts will be in, this bolted to this, then I'll start wiring this all up. So let's try, let's go ahead and start getting this all bolted in. Excuse me, on the tripod, the tripod sucks. Uh, my tripod is a GoPro tripod from a GoPro on it, and I'm using it for my iPhone. So, because the iPhone, of course, is a whole lot better on the on the uh, on everything when you're videoing. matching bolts everywhere just doing what I have in here in the shop to be able to put it together once it's all put together and it's working then I will come back in and do all matching bolts throughout the whole thing right now my objective is to make sure everything works and functions correctly Once I know everything functions correctly and nothing messes up, then I'll be more comfortable at doing, putting all brand new bolts in, all the same kind of bolts so they all match, and stuff like that. But that will be, when I go to do all matching bolts, um, it'll be powder coated around that time anyway, so. Uh, okay, so now I got that stuff. There's that. These things are hard to turn. A lot of power in there on the magnetic poles. All right, so now we're gonna slide this through here. This is our, uh, it's a green machine, is what I call it. I love this green uh, controller unit. Uh, this is the uh, ND72530. Uh, it's a far driver. This far driver controller unit can hold up to, I believe it's 550 uh, volts. Um, I, don't even correct me, I'm not even gonna go any more than that. I don't know exactly, it's, well, here we go, yeah. 350 amps uh, continuous, or 530 continuous amps. In between there, it can handle 72 volt. Uh, it's the S S S30. Um, 72 volt yeah i'm running 72 volts on it it can run lower than 72 volts dang mosquitoes but uh, i'm running 72 volts on it
I didn't want wear and tear on my wire even though it has a wire loom going around it so that's why you see this radiator hose um, right here and the reason why I use this radiator hose is because I didn't like the fact that this could rub on this and cause problems in the future so I, I, to protect these wires even though it has a wire loom on it I went ahead and put this rubber here um, that just to pass by through channel it just helps protect it a little bit so I don't have to worry about it so much um, if you was wondering what that was A high view of everything. All right, so for those that you don't know, this comes off the motor, it's a hall central wire. If you don't have it plugged in and it's not turned off in the controller settings, your motor will not spin at all. So you wanna make sure that's plugged in. Um, and then these are your three phase wires here that go down to the controller unit. Probably like, what is he doing? So, right now I'm just coming in here and I'm hooking these uh, three wire, three um, three phase wires to the motor. I think my finger was in front of the camera, so my bad. Trying to show y'all what's going on at the same time as hooking it, screwing everything in is not a simple job, but I'm making it happen. So there's my last wire for the three stage, three phase wires. Then I gotta hook my positive and negative here to the positive and negative on this controller unit now keep in mind everyone don't just wire in a 12 volt 12 volts into anything you have to come off this 12 volt converter because all this wiring every single harness everything that's on here is all running it's running 72 volts at all times 72 volts yes these tiny tiny wires are all 72 volts but they're all 72 volts and if you plug into a 72 volt wire it's supposed to be 12 volt you're gonna have some issues so just be careful out there and make sure you don't just go anywhere on this higher wiring harness. Test because a lot of things ain't 12 volts. Now I designed, the way I designed this is I designed it that way. I still can put back all the plastics back on um, and none of them got damaged. Now towards the end, I told myself, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make it to where no plastics damaged, no plastics cut. Um, that way, if I ever wanted to convert it back, I could, but I'm not going to ever convert it back. I haven't converted my four-wheeler back yet, and I love it. So the reason why people say, well, why'd you make it a, why'd you make your stuff into electric and take gas away from it? The electric sucks. You can't plug it in, blah, 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 blah. Well, I can carry a generator, and I can 
charge it wherever I want. Um, also, if I at most campsites they have chargers, um, so I can charge it at campsites. Uh, off road parks they got chargers, plugs. Um, I can always ch charge it. Um, and uh, on another note, is the reason why I did it is no maintenance. Y'all out there having to change oil, having a spark plug gap, clean carburetors, uh, tune stuff, adjust things. All I got to do is plug it in, charge it, unplug it, drive it. That's it. Um, there's no maintenance to these things. It's, it's plug, plug and play. It's like having an RC car. You take the RC car, if you don't want to play with it, you unplug the battery, you put it up on the shelf. Next year, if you feel like getting playing with it next year, you pull it out next year and you start playing with it. See, same difference. You don't have to do nothing to it. Um, that's the beauty of having it designed that way. See, you know, you can, it just makes things easier in my eyes. That's why I like it that way. That's why I like the, the whole, the whole electric stuff. Of course, you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing right here, but what I'm doing, so you can, so you know what I'm doing, is I'm hooking up the last two wire, uh, wires, and that's the wires going to the positive on this terminal here, and this is for the wiring harness. Uh, so the wiring harness has its power uh, on this same screw, which I'm not gonna screw it all the way in, the negative and positive right here, because I have to have the battery come off of there, and I have not yet made my battery terminals to go to the battery connector. I'm just going to set those there for right now, and I will get back to that later because that's easy. I don't have to take any plastics off to do so. Okay. Moving on down the line here. I want to secure that house. Secure that somehow. So more zip ties. Zip ties are my best friend to keep clean things up. So right now, so you know what I'm doing. I'm just doing some wire management, cleaning some wires up stuff out of the way. That way nothing gets pinched when I put it all back together. zip ties off. Now this system does come with an ability if you want to put it, make it an endurance and have it on the road, you can have blinkers, headlights, brake lights, all that goodies. You can have that with this system. Um, it, it has it all built in. I'll show you. So, oh gosh, sorry. So it's, I got blinkers, brake lights, all that stuff, high beams, low beams, everything, one, two, three, parking brake i got oh I mean, i got everything right here for that so it does have the ability these wires here are the wires so you can run wires to your rear lights and brake lights and all that good stuff um that's that stuff there and uh i have to figure out what that was that's a negative it looks like i don't remember having a negative that was cut but anyways i'll have to figure that out but get back to it oh. 